Hello everyone. In this segment, we are going to discuss imaging in one of the most commonly seen problems that is backache. We are going to discuss pain generators beyond disc. We understand that when we are talking of backache, it can be due to the anterior elements or something which is related to the posterior elements and few other segments like spinal canal stenosis or few unusual entities. In this graphic, we can clearly see and revise the various components in the posterior element section. These are the pedicle, facet joints, lamina, spinous process, ligamentum flavum and the interspinous ligaments. When we see the posterior elements, we come across these many entities and now we are going to discuss about the facet joints. Facet joints are true synovium line diarthrodial joints and they start degenerating very early in life almost by the second decade and universally by 60 years of age we can see the degeneration in almost all the patients. These are responsible for 15 to 30 percent of mechanical axial low back pain. If we understand the pathophysiology, the natural course of degeneration takes place in three phases. One is dysfunction, two unstability and three with stabilization and fibrosis. In the dysfunction phase, there is early synovitis and this may be unilateral radicular symptoms. In phase two, there is subluxation of the facet joints and increased movement can be the clinical presentation. In the phase three, there is stabilization with periarticular fibrosis and then person might have multi-level bilateral radicular symptoms. Pain may be due to intrinsic pathology in the facet joint or it could have been there because of the mass effect secondary to the osteophytes, effusion, synovial cysts, etc. So we need to see all these additional findings and search for these and their mass effects. If we start with facet synovitis, it is an inflammatory osteoarthropathy coming with morning stiffness, tenderness, increase with rotation and extension. Imaging finding consists of T2 hyperintensity in these axial images. So what is more important to see is we see the axials from the facet joints and we see the sagittal as well. There will be enhancement in and around the facet joints. These may also mimic infection in early phases. If we try to grade the facet synovitis, then when it is confined to the capsule, it is grade 1. Periarticular less than 50% is grade 2. More than 50% is grade 3. An extension into the foramen, ligamentum, flavum, transverse process, vertebral body becomes grade 4. PET CT might also be useful but not usually done. This is just to differentiate active inflammation versus fibrosis. Rest of the cause of backache related to facet joints are due to the mass effect. One of the most commonly seen is osteoarthrosis. That is erosion of the articular disc, subchondral erosions and cysts. These are better seen on CT images but definitely can be seen on MR as well. Periarticular hyperostosis and osteophytes and joint space narrowing. The keyhole appearance is very important to elicit on sagittal images and we should always try to make sure that bilaterally the keyhole is maintained. Joint subluxation, joint effusion, hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum, intraarticular fragments may be there that is also known as joint mice and they could be vacuum phenomena. Here we can see an example of facet joint osteoarthrosis causing spinal canal stenosis with the ligamentum flavum thickening and this can be described as secondary spinal canal stenosis due to osteoarthrosis at facet joints and ligamentum flavum. Then we come to a very commonly seen mass effect causing etiology pathology that is the synovial cyst. Facet joint they have no capsule anteriorly so the synovium extends posterior to the ligamentum flavor and that is why when there is degeneration of the ligamentum flavor there is distension of this space leading to formation of a cyst. These cysts are commonly seen at L45 level and they are seen to cause the compression of the dorsal nerve roots leading to radicular symptoms. They can be true cyst because if they are synovial line then we'll call them true cyst or they can be just a pseudo cyst. They may contain clear fluid, they may contain hemorrhagic fluid, they may contain calcified fluid. Sometime on axial sections we might miss the synovial cyst if our cuts or if our planning are not accordingly. So what we need to do is if on a sagittal we are able to pick up one synovial cyst we should make sure that when we plan the axial the reference line should go through one of these. This is an example of the hemorrhagic synovial cyst. 
again can cause a lot of lateral recess narrowing as we can see and nerve root compression. Then here is an example of a calcified synovial cyst which is causing S1 nerve root compression. 